Nasopharyngeal carcinoma. To be able to define what is nasopharyngeal carcinoma, we need to break it down into two pieces. What is a carcinoma? It's a cancer that is epithelial in origin. And this will take me to the divisions of the tumors or the type of the tumors. Tumors can be classified into benign and malignant tumors. All right? And malignant tumors can further classify it into primary tumor and secondary tumors. And primary tumor can further classify it into um, the tumor that are epithelial in origin, and that will be carcinoma. And this is our topic today, carcinoma. And on the other side, tumor that are mesenchymal or stromal in origin, such as uh, sarcoma. All right. So these are the definitions or the subdivisions of tumors generally in the body. So how would we further classify or differentiate between what is a, a, a benign tumor and a malignant tumor? So benign tumor usually are a slow growing tumor, all right? Slow growing tumor that are well differentiated and this means they resemble the tissue of origin to well circumscribed Three, never invade the surrounding structure for never metastasize, okay? And sometimes they are capsulated tumor. Not all of them, but most of the time they're going to be capsulated tumor. So benign tumor, they are slow growing, well differentiated, well circumscribed, sometimes capsulated, never invade the surrounding structure, never metastasize uh, to the distant areas. On the other side, for malignant tumors, they are the complete opposite, meaning they are rapidly growing tumor and poorly differentiated and not well circumscribed and also uh, sometimes capsulated, sometimes not capsulated and metastasize and invade the surrounding structure. These are the malignant tumors. So now we defined the second part of what is a nasopharyngeal carcinoma. That is, it's a tumor that is epithelial in origin that arises from the nasopharynx. And this will take us to the next question. What is the nasopharynx? If we come here and you can see uh, this is a cross -check section in the head and neck, you can find on the top that this is the nose, all right? And this is the mouth or the oral cavity. Behind the oral cavity, there is something called the oropharynx. Behind the nose, there is something called the nasopharynx. This nasopharynx is lined from the inside by epithelial cells. These epithelial cells might turn into malignant cells and that will result into malignant carcinoma. It doesn't happen out of the blue. It has some risk factors that will lead to nasopharyngeal carcinoma. And this will take us to the next question. Uh, what are the risk factors for nasopharyngeal carcinoma? I would classify any risk factors into modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. The number of fiber risk factors here can include being a male patient, you have three times higher than a female patient to get nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Being Asian or African, again, is another risk factor for getting nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Genetic risk factors, genetic risk factors, or having viruses such as Epstein Barr virus can lead to that as well. And finally, if you have any family history, from nasopharyngeal carcinoma, you are at risk of having this as well. Modifiable risk factors, the three S, such as smoking, number two, spirits or alcohol, and number three is the um, eating salted fish as well. Eating salted fish can increase the risk of having this nasopharyngeal carcinoma. All right, so let's go back and answer a question by question. So we have carcinoma definition, that's an tumor that is epithelial in origin with differentiated between benign and malignant tumors as you can see here one resemble one doesn't resemble the dish of origin and we made the comparison between them the mechanism of radiotherapy i would classify this into a direct mechanism and also indirect mechanism direct mechanism it damages the dna of the cancerous cells and this will lead to death of the cell or necrosis indirect production of lots of free radicals that will deprive the tissue from its oxygen and then will cause necrosis. Unfortunately, the, you need to remember, memorize these units, which it's there's nothing to make it easy really. So Curie uh, for radiotherapy is for exposure 
and gray is for absorption and servant is for the dose of that radiotherapy. You have an oral lesion that showed hyphae or pseudo hyphae, that's candidiasis. And in this patient, he's at higher risk of having candidiasis because one, he has nasopharyngeal carcinoma, two, he, he, he might have had chemo or radiotherapy, three, he might be immunocompromised. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma can spread by multiple ways, and including blood spread, lymphatic spread, and also local spread. The blood spread doesn't usually happen, but mainly the local spread. If we go back to our diagram, the local spread is able to go in all the direction. It can go on the front to the nasal cavity, all right? It can go to the oropharynx and oral cavity, and can go into the base of the skull, it can go to the sphenoid sinus, and can go laterally as well to the parapharyngeal spaces and the middle ear cavity. For lymph node tumors, it could be primary and secondary tumors. Uh, secondary tumor, these are meds, primary, leukemia, and lymphoma. And how could we investigate a lymph node that is metastasizing? You can always do some imaging or to do biopsy. For imaging, you can start by ultrasound, CT, MRI, or PET CT scan. For biopsy, you can do fine needle aspiration cytology, and that's not really a biopsy, but a cytology instead. You can do an excision, remove the whole lymph node and send it for biopsy. You can do a sentinel lymph node biopsy and all of them can be done with or without immune histochemistry. Um, the last question here, talking about some of the oncogenic virus and I would classify them into RNA virus and DNA virus. For the RNA virus, you have hepatitis C virus and also human T-cell lymphoma virus type 1, all right? For hepatitis C virus, it can cause uh, uh, um, hepatocellular carcinoma. Human T-cell lymphoma virus can cause leukemia or lymphoma as well. Can cause leukemia or lymphoma as well. On the other side, you have some DNA viruses, and this include uh, hepatitis B virus and he, uh, also ebstein Barr virus. Uh, human herbivirus virus 8 and also uh, the last one is a human papilloma virus you have two human viruses an Ebstein Barr virus and the hepatitis B virus the hepatitis B virus can cause hepatocellular carcinoma this one can cause nasopharyngeal carcinoma and also Burkitt's lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma as well human herbivirus virus 8 which happen in HIV patients can cause Kaposi sarcoma and finally, human papillomavirus can cause cervical cancer in female patients. All right, cervical cancer in female patients. So these are the nasopharyngeal carcinoma and the viruses that are oncogenic viruses. I think this is a new question that wasn't explained in the previous video.